Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Caveman to Cosmos with me, Alpha Biomega and Byzantium. So this is start of episode 2 and as you can see we are about to get Bombos Cave but before we go with that I wanted to show you a couple of things. So this is the extent of the map that we have uh, discovered so far. As you can see we have been quite busy. Uh, most of our units moving around happily, but not all of them were actually that lucky. Uh, one of our wanderers was eaten here by a black bear, right next to the Babylonian capital, which is a bit ironic, but yeah, we know it was the bear, it wasn't them. Uh, but the very next turn we have gotten an extra stone thrower from a native village here, so I guess that's kinda cool. Uh, we don't need to be sad about it. I actually want to mention one thing that I might have misrepresented in the previous episode and it was not my intention but an actual uh, I guess mistake is the right word because I was under the impression that wanderers could attack animals and they can't. They really have just extra speed. So in a, in a way Stone throwers are more valuable, they're slower, but they can generate us some income. Now there are upgrades to the Wanderer, you can get Hunters for example, which will then be way superior to Stone throwers or any other units that we have, but we don't have access to them at this point. And you can see that we are very close to language as well, so 9 more turns to that, I guess I'm gonna do another update once we get that. Okay. Uh, before we get the Bombos Cave, this goes without saying we found a couple more civilization. We now know of five other. Uh, here is Carthage. But I believe that's all that we found cities of. Uh, yeah, we know of... This is... Uh, this is Arabia. This is the Iraqis. And here is... Oh, here's Babylon and here is um, Carthage. So we're missing just Mali. Okay, we don't know where they are located. So let's go and get the Bombos Cave. I actually wanted to show you the um, the income of the city that we had before. It's stagnant as far as food production go and we get seven from the uh, production of industry and we are producing uh, not much gold at all. So let's end the turn and see what the final effect will be. So we get the Bombos Cave. It gives us free food, free uh, production and free gold. Though, to be honest, this is always modified by the city it is in, so it can change quite dramatically. We're also getting a special trade to the city, which is 5 tourism per turn. I don't know what this one will bring us in the long run. I don't think this will make much of a difference, especially now. I don't even know if tourism is activated by some technology or something, but we get that. And it's kind of cool that it gets obsolete with sedentary lifestyle because we're not gonna live in caves anymore. So, uh, let's go with Reed Gatherer. I know, yeah, that gives extra production and extra food to us. So that's the most valuable one we have. And let's check the city itself. Okay, so now we've got 14 production and 3 extra food, so we are officially growing in population. It's gonna take 1459 turns to get extra population. Don't worry, we'll do our best to not have it that long. And Reed Gatherer takes only 15 turns now. And with every single building, we're gonna up our production and our food uh, production. Oh, well, that's our industry production and food production. I'll need to get used to these terms. Apology for that. And that way, we will get bigger and more competitive. So, I'll see you with the next update. Okay, here we are with another update, 8 turns later. The year is 183,115 BC. Uh, we are working on the Reed Gatherer, but we will get language. I actually forgot to mention in the previous update something that I wanted to, and that's uh, the fact that Bombos Cave is a famous site or archaeological site in South Africa. And it was very famous for uh, shedding some light on human evolution and how people live in caves. Uh, they found a number of bone tools there and stone tools. There's a really nice and interesting yet pretty simple 
and uh, you know self-explanatory topic on it on Wikipedia so if you'd be interested in that I recommend you give it a read because it's it brings up a quite a lot of information anyway we are going to get language next so let's go ahead and get it language is not only the vehicle of thought it is a great and efficient instrument in thinking okay so thank you Humphrey Davy uh, science and power and we get one extra bonus to happiness in all cities plus a lot of available folklore traits these come up as uh, you enhance your culture via various uh, units or by capturing animals the buildings this enable are several but the one that is most interesting to me is the community discussion this one gives extra health and extra culture and extra education per turn so we are going to shuttle that one right now because this will be important now the extra uh, culture will boost us in expanding our border and finally utilizing the rich land around us while the extra education will give us a bonus to research so it is awesome there's also a couple of things that we can discover, I guess. Lake Baikal, Dead Sea, Basalt Organ. Okay, so these are just things that you can now discover on the map because you know about them. Wonder of Nature, Victoria Falls. It also gives us a couple of special traits that we can give to our units. Like Stinging Insults, <laughs> Taunt Chance 50%. Stinging Insults do goad and educate there's so many traits that you can give to your military units it makes everything so interesting and we get native language which will require us to do a revolution but we are going to do that now so let's check it if you are not new to civilization games which most of you probably aren't you know what civics are you can see how many civics there are in the game, it's insane. And they're split into categories of government, we are unfortunately still in the anarchism stage. Rule, obedience, power, strongmen, so those are the very basic ones. Military is militia, religion, irreligion, society, primitive, economy, communalism, welfare, survival, currency, currency less, Workforce unorganized, education ignorance, language, we have nonverbal, but we're gonna switch to lang a native language now. Immigration is borderless, agriculture is hunter gathering, and garbage is garbage anywhere. So, what does language give us? The one that we have right now is nonverbal, and it is lack of language that makes complex communication an impossible task. Plus one uh, sickness in all cities. Nonverbal communication between people is communication through sending and receiving wordless cues. It includes the use of visual cues such as body language, kinesics, distance, proxemics, and physical environment and appearance, of voice, paralanguage, and of touch, haptics. It can also include the use of time, chronemics, and eye contact, and the actions of looking while talking and listening, frequency of glances, Pattern of fixation, pupil dilation, and blink rate, ocular six. Regarding articulation, there is considerable speculation about the language capabilities of early Homo 2.5 to 0 0.8 million years ago. Anatomically, some scholars believe features of bipedalism, which developed in Australopithecines around 3.5 million years ago, would have brought change to the skull, allowing for a more L-shaped vocal tract. The shape of the tract and, and a larynx positioned relatively low in the neck are necessary prerequisites for many of the sounds humans make, particularly vowels. Anatomically, modern humans begin to appear in the fossil record in Ethiopia some 200,000 years ago, although there is still much debate as to whether behavioral modernity emerged in Africa at around the same time. A growing number of archaeologists nowadays invoke the Southern African Middle Stone Age use of red ochre pigments, for example, at Blombos Cave. Yeah, that's, that's what I mentioned, just that um, this is a very valuable uh, source of information. As evidence that modern anatomy and behavior co-evolved, these archaeologists argue strongly that if modern humans at this early stage 
were using red ochre pigments for ritual and symbolic purposes, they probably had symbolic language as well. Okay, and we're abandoning that in favor of native language. A language exists, but it is very difficult for foreigners to understand it. So we get one extra percentage in gold, one extra percentage in research, and one extra percentage in culture in all cities, and it's doubled for our capital. And it actually gives a bonus to all of uh, the neighboring states that we know about because we can now talk with them and it allows construction of community discussion. So let's do a revolution and start using that. Okay, uh, so what are we going to go for next? Now, that is a bit of a question, but I thought about it for quite some time and I think we're gonna go for tool making. And to get tool making, we need scavenging, which will give us additional buildings to boost our food production. I want to gathering first because those give you most of the production uh, of hammers or industry production, while scavenging gives you mostly food production, but a lot of unhealthiness as well. So we'll need to keep that in check, otherwise we'd be just wasting food. I mean, there's no point in getting tight pool, tight pool scavenger when he gives you more food, but also the sickness that eliminates that bonus. So let's get scavenging and look at the city. Okay, here you can see the Bombos Cave and the Palace. I actually don't know if we get any... Oh, we already got conceptual buildings. So you can see that uh, the disease that we have right now, of 31, is giving us a common cold, which lowers production a bit, and it gives us an actual uh, penalty to health and happiness. So if the disease will keep increasing, which it won't at this point, until we make some buildings that actually increase it, which can happen, of course, uh, this will not go, actually, it above, uh, it exists above plus 10, so we would need to get this to below, um, below 10 to remove even the common cold. But it's gonna get pretty, pretty dramatic, and once you reach plague, your people are pretty much unmanageable in the city. Uh, we got some housing of animal burrows, but also houses, housing cave dwelling, which gives us extra protection in gold, homeless housing, and housing in tree hollows, which also gives us some sickness but yeah these are the four that uh, portrayed here as plus four from buildings um, so this is what the community uh, discussion is going to come into play because it's gonna increase education and eventually we're gonna see a bonus to research now here you see the tourism increasing i'm not really sure what it's gonna do if it's gonna have any effect at this point but i know that you know in the future it will definitely tourism is the driving force driving force of the world today so it should okay so let's put the uh the community discussion there so we don't forget about it and i'll be back with another update soon Hello everyone, and welcome back. The year is 180,659 BC, and we are about to get community discussion. But before we look on that, I wanted to mention that we have our first unit that has a combat free trait. Now, combat free gives you a 30% strength and lowers the chance to subdue animal by 6% while giving you extra 6% to hunting kill. What I really enjoyed about Civilization games, but what I enjoy greatly about Caveman to Cosmos, especially, is the fact that it makes it really worthwhile to train your units and be careful with how you use them, because eventually you can get a unit that will have a huge number of traits and become extremely valuable. And having a bunch of elite units can sway any war in your way, but losing them or wasting them can be disastrous. So the fact that we are already managing to get a unit with a trait of uh, 30%. Here we have still plus one only. Uh, yeah, you're a wanderer, you have no bonuses. But I believe there's another one here and he has two. So we have a couple of trained units already. And if we can keep them alive, they will eventually be very valuable. We could upgrade them to units like archers down the line. Okay, there's a slinger. The slinger can then be upgraded to archer. Okay, an archer already has 
a 50% city defense bonus and has a strength of 4. So if you imagine that we add additional 40% to its strength and put the city defense and hills defense and if there are walls, such a unit can turn a siege into a nightmare for the AI. So let's hope that we can keep these units alive as long as possible. Okay, now let's end the turn and check the city. We will start uh, constructing Okay, and I'm not sure if this is the Lichen Gatherer or Lichen Gatherer. Both sound right to me, but that is because I never heard this word until I actually saw it in the game. So I'm sorry I'm gonna call it a Lichen Gatherer because it sounds a bit more natural, but uh, if I'm mistaken, let me know in the comments. Anyway, we now have both the Middle Eastern culture, that's what you start with, and the community discussion that gives us health and extra culture. And thus we gain 1.14 culture per turn, meaning in 20 turns we are going to expand our border and give um, and get access, or the game will give us access to additional tiles. So that is amazing. But as you can see, I'm still focusing mostly on the buildings that give us production. Now, education that I mentioned before already is going to pop here soon and it's gonna give us additional um, benefits over the long term. Though I think community discussion itself is not going to be enough for that. Okay, and I'm, I just want to check if there is anything new here. Nope. Okay, so tourism is now at 94, though it seems like it does not trigger anything yet. Okay, so never mind then, never mind then, we'll just have to wait till it gets to some degree that is usable or when the game triggers it. The year is now 178,050 and we are about to get scavenging. Now a scavenging will give us a number of buildings. I have already uh, put the whole queue in here. We're gonna finish the stick gatherer. We're already working on that. Then we get the rock gatherer, lumber gatherer, grass gatherer, tuber gatherer, grain gatherer, berry gatherer, and storage pit. And I'm gonna mix in uh, if there are some nice buildings coming from scavenging. But I'll have to look into that a bit more. But again, I'm most interested in increasing our production first, uh, industrial production to make that clear, rather than food production because that one can come secondary. Because, in, I mean, look at that, we already have so many things to build while we are going to throw additional things at that. So yeah, I think it is uh, reasonable to work on your industrial production first to keep up with the demands of the game. If your friend is already dead, and being eaten by vultures, I think it's okay to feed some bits of your friend to one of the vultures to teach him to do some tricks. But only if you're serious about adopting the vulture. Gigantic deep thoughts. <laughs> I like that. Okay, so scavenging gives us the ability to build scavenging camp, which is not going to be useful for us until we grow our border and it reveals a large amount of extra resources on the map. We also get something called back down which increases withdrawal chance and we get ant catcher, grasshopper catcher, carrion gatherer which is great but not great at the same time because it gives sickness until we get cooking, earthworm gatherer, <laughs> okay. I kind of like that this one gives additional buildings with boat building agriculture and gardening, meaning that these things are more and more useful as you progress. Snail gatherer, ugh, I don't want to eat snails, nest thief, termite catcher, and tightwool scavenger, again, not a great thing. And here you can see all of the resources that it will give us for now. Okay, and I definitely mm, made my mind that we are going after tool making, because again, uh, tool making will be very valuable as it will give us stone tool, stu stone tools. What the hell am I saying? Stone tools. Damn, stone tools. Stone tools, and the stone tool maker is one of the most valuable things in the game, or at least in the early game. As you can see, it has a huge amount of boosts uh, that it will 
collect over time. But once you get to metal casting, bronze working, it will start removing these bonuses again because logic way stone tools are no longer that useful. So in the prehistorical era, it is great. But once you get to, I guess, somewhere around here, where would be the bronze casting? Here's the metal casting, so it would probably be below that, I guess. Though it depends on what they mean. Here's copper working, metal casting. So it would be somewhere here in the in the sedentary lifestyle. So let's go with tool making. I'm not sure what we're gonna go with next, but there is a couple of things. I kind of like trails because it gives you a scout, which is an upgraded wanderer. But I maybe like even deception because it leads to cooperation, and that one gives some really nice buildings. A childcare hut, which increases growth of culture and health, but dramatically reduces um, disease and increases education. There's also the child labor crew here, which gives a huge bonus, but it requires some pretty harsh requirements to get it. So, yeah, you need cocoa or kava or mushroom or eggs or raw fish or raw meat and some other things to build it. There's the veterinaries and a lot of things. So we might go with deception um, and then cooperation. Or I might just move from here to hard hammer percussion first because that gives Cobman. And it's a really nice defensive unit for your cities. What's worth mentioning though is that deception actually activates the first crime, lying, which is present since one crime. And it actually increases your crime further so it's it's a perpetual uh, malice that you are going to get we should be fine though i don't think that it's such a bad thing because uh, at this point you can see that our crime is fairly free but yeah it, it gives us nothing so it will start increasing slowly and we will get one unhappiness but again we can we can absorb that now we have uh, nine extra so yeah that is good so um before we jump forward again, I wanted to check, damn, there's already a lot of resources on the map. What did you sh show us? So there's some llamas here. So if we wanted to, yeah, that would be out of the reach. We would have to build that, yeah, and I wanted to build a city here, but there's pigs here now. So that is very nice, pigs. Uh, we discovered some poultry, some parrots, though parrots might have been there before. There are some elephants, which will give us extra happiness once we start killing them for their tusks. Uh, there's some sheep here, some elephants. What do the uh, Arabians and Iroki have? They got squash here and tea. Okay. And the Arabians are going to have stone. Damn, that's going to make building walls so easy for them. Without stone, building stone walls is just a hassle of... I think it's four times the cost or something like that. Or maybe even if it's double, it's really, really hard. They got some rice. Pretty, pretty good location. What about you guys? You got mushrooms. So that means you can build the child labor crews, doesn't it? You got some tea, some coffee, some melons and beavers. Okay. And Carfish actually started on dates. Oh, that's pretty cool. And they got barley and cows right next to it. Okay, so they'll grow pretty fast as well. There's some obsidian here. We already saw that before. Oh, we got some camels and some peyote. I don't know what this one is, peyote. That's probably some exotic, exotic fruit. You can get a plantation built on it. A lot of gold and happiness comes from that. And here are some horses down south. More of them. Yeah, pretty, pretty rich map. We'll have to be really careful about where we go next. Welcome back to Constantinople in the year 176,361 BC. So as you can see, we are still 42 turns away from tool making. And we are just working on the rock gatherer, but the, what I wanted to show you was the following. We are about to grow our border. So I'm kind of interested in seeing what kind of uh, benefit we're going to get from it. Now our production is already 13. 
we get four extra food every turn so we're growing nicely and as you can see tourism is now above 140 but we still don't have anything from it yeah no effect and we get education at 25 and still no effect these things can actually come into play later in game when they are properly activated so i'm happy with it we also managed to lower the disease to 19 uh, by having that building that I would not pronounce because it cannot be named. So let's end the turn and enjoy the growth of the border for the very first time. Auto build. Presence of Earth has been built by the citizens of Constantinople and presence of fire. Okay, so what does that mean? Oh wow, okay, so we are getting a massive boost. Six food from this place alone and two extra gold. Which, okay, for some reason don't make our research faster, but I guess it might be due to civics. <laughs> we could get a citizen. Okay, never mind though. So this is good, and that actually allows me to send out uh, the gatherer there and further develop this plot. So, yeah, it will give us extra health. And plus two with seed camp, which is what we are going to build there, right? Yeah, okay, so we are going to get extra two food from this tile. That is a pretty solid deal. So we will get 12 per turn. Yeah, okay, so growth. We're looking at something like 350 turns towards the growth of the city. At which point we can turn to another tile, though I'm not sure which one. There's a number of things we could start. Yeah, you can work on the on the bamboo and get some extra uh, food from there, but also some extra production and maybe even gold eventually. Not not sure how uh, it will work, but that seems like the best choice for us because it will boost everything. Yeah, food is good, but two extra production will go a long way. So you guys build the seed camp here and. I wanted to also show you the map again, showing how much we have seen. Unfortunately, another of our wonders has been slain, this time by a Neanderthal uh, clubman. So, that sucks. I'm also starting to have a pretty hard time finding animals. I'm pretty sure that uh, since last time I played the game, they dialed down the spawn rate dramatically. I guess it was in balancing the game. Go figure out. It was one of the things that I wanted to get myself so yeah i'm actually looking one uh angle of view here that could be raised on when this episode goes up and that is that i should have focused on culture first have the growth of the city come much earlier and focus on production second but i just like to do it this way i just really like to prioritize the city and the um, industrial production first because it will make everything faster. Now tool making will come in 37 turns and we got what? We'll have the lumber gatherer and the grass gatherer and the rock gatherer done by then which will give us three additional production. So we'll be looking at 14 and 12 growth in food. And then we get the two grain berry but I think we're gonna build the uh, stone tool maker first immediately after we get it and we finish the previous building because that is going to be something that I will like. So anyway I think this was uh, enough for this episode I played I think even maybe what is it 155th turn? Yeah 155th turn so yeah we are going to call it a day here uh, thank you very much for joining me and I'll see you in the next episode where we are going to continue developing our beautiful city and growing it hopefully in the near future.